Welcome to the first episode of Just Scrap Radio. I'm your host, Cole Shelton. On this very first episode, we have a stack show. First up is UFC featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky. He talks about his rematch against Max Holloway, the state of the featherweight division, and who could possibly be next if he beats Max Holloway. Next up, we talk to UFC light heavyweight contender Volkan Uzdemir to preview his UFC 251 fight against UFC debutant Yuri Prozhaka, who's the former Risen champ. That should be a great fight. Volkan's ex- not expecting that fight to go the distance. And finally, we're joined by future UFC Hall of Famer, former UFC lightweight champion Frankie Edgar to preview his July 15th showdown, and which is his bantamweight debut against Pedro Munoz. It's a great show, so enjoy. All right, we're now joined by UFC reigning, defending UFC featherweight champion Alex Volkanovski. Alex, how are you doing? I'm very good, mate. I'm very good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, you're obviously on this massive card, debut of Fight Island. I know you, you and Holloway were supposed to fight in Perth. Obviously, that card got canceled. Were you disappointed when all this happened and you couldn't have your first title defense back in Perth? Yeah, look, you know, obviously, you know, defending on, on home soil uh, in front of a, a you know, a stacked uh, Australia, you know, crowd, you know, in Australia, you know, would have been, it would have been unreal. You know what I mean? You know, you miss an opportunity to fight in front of fans, not only any fans, Australian fans, you know, you're, a lot of your supporters. So it would have been unreal. But, you know what I mean, it, look, it is what it is. And, you know, as I always say, let's just, you know, you just need to adapt. You just need to adapt to whatever whatever's in front of you. And, uh, you know, you got to stay positive as well. And, you know, I have, you know, this is a huge opportunity fighting on Fight Island, the first card on Fight Island, you know what I mean, free title fights, you know, stacked card from top to bottom. Like, you know what I mean, this is opportunity you couldn't miss. So if anything, uh, you know, this could probably work, work out better. So, you know what I mean, uh, it's just... It is what it is, and sometimes you just got to stay positive. So I'm looking at it as a big opportunity, and it was an opportunity I didn't want to miss. So as soon as I, you know, I was given this fight, and it was reasonably short notice. Luckily, I'm a professional, and I stay fit and strong all year round. Uh, we we got we got everything that needed to be done so we could train and have that contact training and get ready for for this fight. So we're in good nick already. So it's good, and I still got a few more weeks. So let's go. Does it feel like deja vu? Your first fight was obviously when he fought Holloway, three title fights, Usman headlining the card. Now you're back fighting Holloway and Usman's headlining the card again. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's sort of a past my mind a fair bit. Like, uh, like I was sitting there and be like, oh, yeah, last time that it was pretty similar, but, you know, it, it, it is, it is the same, but at the same time, it's, it's a lot different. It's Fight Island, no crowds, uh, you know, not many sport happening, you know, not, not much sport happening and, you know, again, that's that's what I mean by it's a big opportunity. There's going to be a lot of eyes on this event. You know, and and it's not only the title fights. Obviously, you got free title fights, which is huge. Then you got all these, uh, you know, just got stacked uh, fights from top to bottom as well. So, you know, I'll be backstage warming up and watching the fights as well. So it's going to be good. When everyone was talking about Fight Island, were you one of those people that were thinking it's going to be in the Caribbean, a nice tropical location? What was your reaction when you found out it was Abu Dhabi? Uh, look, man. It, I never, like, a lot of people are going, oh, yeah, did you expect it to be on the beach? And I was like, man, I never expected an octagon on the beach. You know what I mean? That's just, uh, you know, it just can't happen. You know what I mean? Especially with uh, the rules and regulations and, you know, it, <laughs> it just wouldn't work. So, and I don't want to fight in the sun anyway. So, but in saying that, it's meant to be hot. Uh, it was hot last time in uh, Abu Dhabi. So, um, we got we got to see how that that's going to play out. Let's, I want to know if uh, they've, they've got air conditioners in this uh, damn marina, so I don't know, but yeah, look, man, I was a, uh, I haven't really taken too much notice. I, I still look at it as Fight Island, Yaz Island, Fight Island. I still love the, the sound of that, so I'm all about it. Like I said, it's that more, like I've been saying, it's that Mortal Combat shit, and I can't wait. You're obviously they're keeping the times to traditional pay per view times. So you're gonna be fighting like seven, eight a.m. There. Are you just gonna try to stay on the same time zone and trying to sleep through the day and be up all night then? Yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll stay. I usually try and do that anyway. So uh, I had to fight at like one a.m. in the morning in Brazil. You know what I mean over there in Brazil and things like that. So I just try and uh, stick to the my time zone because I'm so used to training at nine thirty in the morning or like ten thirty or whatever it is in the morning uh, here in Australia. So I do my sessions, especially on the Sunday. I specifically do a session on a Sunday at the same time I would be fighting wherever I am in the world. So I do that here in Australia. Usually it's just before lunch 
uh, here in Australia. So, you know, I have I get my body used to that time, fighting at that time. So no matter where I am in the world, my body clock knows it's go time at that time. You get what I mean? So, and again, once you get there, you know, I'm obviously going to try and sleep earlier, wake up earlier and things like that. And, you know, it's easier said than done, but, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to to be pretty successful with uh, my sleeping patterns every time I, I go overseas. So I'm, I'm sure uh, I'll be fine. And with all this uh, COVID stuff going on, were you able to go out to city kickboxing or did you have to stay in Australia and train here? Yeah, no, we, yeah, we can't go anywhere. So I'm, I'm here in Australia, but uh, I'll be doing my whole camp here in Australia. Well, a lot of people don't, like I do most of my camp still here in Australia, but I go to City Kickbox. I'll do a few weeks here, yeah, there. And, uh, but the, the beauty of this is, uh, you know, I still got the boys, you know, they we're obviously still a team. I'm, I'm having video chats with the boys, like, you know, my coaches, uh, Joe Lopez and Eugene, I think, and Brad Riddell were having chats. I was having chats with Brad Riddell, going over my sparring footage. You get what I mean? So it's nothing changes. If anything, we're breaking things down more now, now the fact that, you know, we've got the sparring there and we can really look at, you know what I mean, rather than them just being there and be like, oh, you know, and then do the, go off and do their own thing. Now they can watch every one of, every one of my rounds and really break things down. Like, look, this, 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 this. Uh, so it's good, you know what I mean? Uh, getting that, that input, you know, from an outside in, it's uh, always good. And again, like the, the guys over there obviously uh, know what they're doing. Some of the best uh, strikers in the world over there and some of the, the best brains over there as well. So it's good we get to use that. I've been lucky enough to have uh, some of the best fighters in Australia come here with us. I've like hired out a cabin for them. I'm going to need two cabins because that's how many of them we've got. Uh, so there's going to be like you know five, six that are actually live with me, and then we get a few that come down there for you know for like for sparring and, and whatnot. So training's going good. We've got the bodies, which is good. I've got the brains. I've got the same schedule as always. I've got that hard and that hard work ticker. You know what I mean? So I'm going hard. I'm, I'm getting fit. And, I'm ready, man. I'm pumped. As you can see, I'm excited. I'm, I, I love that, uh, you know, with all this chaos that's happening, uh, for me to be able to still do what I love and, and do it properly. You know what I mean? I'm not half-assing this. It's getting done. It's getting done properly. So I'm stoked. And after you beat Holloway at 245, it, you won very convincingly four rounds, if not all five, on a lot of people's scorecards. Did you right. think? Did you think it? <laughs> did you think it was going to be an immediate rematch? Because featherweight, there was no clear cut contender. Like there was no next guy. There are a lot of options, like Zabid and a, Ortega, a Zombie. Or was that Holly rematch something you wanted? Well, look, that was uh, something that the UFC obviously always wanted. You know, Dana White always wanted that. Uh, I said myself straight after the fight. You know, he was a great champion, and I want to give him that respect by giving him that rematch. Watching back the tape, I was like, oh, you know, do you get a rematch for uh, a you know pretty much a five round shutout? But you know, again, he was a great champion. Um, it wasn't like I just absolutely ten aided him every round or anything like that. So, you know, look again, he's a great champion. But over time, people quickly forget how dominant that that fight was. And you know what I mean? Uh, you know, some people are, are still, you still get, obviously the majority of people are no one convincingly and obviously picking me to win again, but there's still a lot of people there that, that are still doubting me. There's a lot of people that quickly forget what I've done. And the, the beauty of that is I get to, I get to show everyone that July 11th and, you know, and, and it being Max, this is a fight I wanted. Cause again, uh, I think that's the biggest fight. I still think uh, out of everyone in the division, he's a, he's my hardest matchup. You know, I've already fought the hardest matchups in this division and I've already took them all out. Chad Mendes, Aldo, and uh, and Max Holloway. They were the hardest matchups by far, I believe, and I've already took them out. So, you know, and taking out Max in his prime, back-to-back, -back, you know what I mean? And that's saying something, you know what I mean? And it, that's why I need to – I can't wait, man. I'm looking forward to this. You know, I've got a new fire in the belly, and, you know, again, winning's not – not enough for me right now. As I've been saying, I'm going out there to finish him. I really am. Obviously, I'm a smart fighter, so I'm not going to be stupid in there. I'm very calculated, but, you know, a part of my game plan is to, to put him away. So everyone knows I know how to stick to a game plan. So that's that's telling you something. Do you feel disrespected heading into this rematch? Because those fighter picks I was asking for you, about you, for you, I'm doing the same thing for your fight. And so far, the vast majority are saying, oh, the Holloway didn't show up. He'll show up for this fight. And, like, a lot of people are thinking Max is going to win. Like, do you feel a lot of this disrespect heading into this rematch? Man, it just makes my win even bigger. At the end of the day, it's like, yeah, look, look, what, look what Max has done. You know, you've got to have respect for the man. Like, you know what I mean? He's, he's no joke. You know what I mean? He's a, that's why I was such a, a, 
a big deal taking him out. You know what I mean? Like when I when I beat him, you know. But I mean, again, quickly pe- people forget. People want to make excuses, and you're getting fired as that that are saying this, and like that's I mean, there's there's levels to this game, and when I hear some of these fighters talk and act like oh he didn't show up and things like that, it it really does show me how little some of these UFC fighters know, and I know that just by watching them fight, but. For them to really believe, I don't know if they're just saying it, but for them to actually believe that, it just shows you how many levels uh, above uh, we re- really are. Like, I completely shut him down. He did exactly what we thought he was going to do. Even when I missed, this is how this is how detailed and how far we go with things. You know, I can't give too much away, but even when I missed, we were aware that I could miss here, but then we've got to go here. And you know what I mean? There were so many, you know, I, I can go all day and explain to you and go into depth of what was really going on in there and to show you how much I was shutting him down and you would blow out. But I mean, again, I'm not the type to talk about myself like that, uh, you know, but again, I get to prove myself uh, again, beating him twice back to back in his prime. No one can doubt me after that. And again, that's why I want to finish because, you know, people are going to make excuses all the time. You go out there, dominate him and put him way inside the five. You ain't going to have Max Holloway, thinking he won, ready to put his hand up. You ain't going to have the judges being like, oh, I don't know who won this, even though I clearly won. You know what I mean? It's You ain't going to have any of that. You're going to have everyone be like, shit, that kid's legit. He said exactly. He said he was going to do exactly what he did. The last four fights, I'm sick of uh, not listening to him. I'm on board. Let's yeah, go. That, that's what I was going to ask you about is, there was a lot of people, like even after the fight, Holloway raised his hands. Is this a fight where you want to make that statement and finish him so there is no debate of oh holloway never showed up or oh exactly maybe right. holloway won that fight 100 percent. again people look and there was a whole narrative around it like playing on these uh, oh yeah the leg kicks weren't really they weren't hurting or you know this that um i thought i was winning and like you know people start believing that and over time we've had a lot of time especially through isolation where you know people start telling themselves these things especially when you're a max holloway fan and, and things like that and like People quickly forget. That's what I mean. That's what all, all I'm trying to say. Uh, I'm really surprised that Max went about it the way he did after that fight. Uh, I think he knows he lost, but you know, whether he's a smart man, he's clever, and he knew if this is the narrative I go, people will believe. It. I don't know. Uh, even talking on, on Joe Rogan and an actor started. He didn't say the judges ripped him off, but started talking about the judges, and then people started. Oh yeah, yeah, the judges were around. I'm like, oh, what the hell's going on here? Like, what are they even talking about? You know what I mean? But. Again, I'm just a realist, man. I'll just tell you how it is. You know, some people aren't like that. If I lose a fight, if I get shut down and someone busts my leg and it hurts and I shift stance and I, I do a whole round in southpaw because my left leg's hurting and I get bashed up even more because I'm in southpaw, I'm going to let everyone know, yeah, it worked. Why the hell would I stay in southpaw when my best round was in the third round? I was landing shot after shot, my biggest round, and that was because he was in southpaw. Why? Because... Obviously, the leg kicks were working, but uh, you know it's just it's funny. But I mean, at the same time, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm a, I'm a realist. Someone hurts my leg, I go, yeah, that leg hurt. Even when I kicked it straight after the fight, there was a kick where I kicked to the Max Holloway. It hurt my leg, so I'll tell everyone, yeah, it fucking hurt my leg too. You know, I mean, that's just how it is. You know, I mean, I'm just I'm as real as it gets. I tell people how it is, and I don't know. Maybe people aren't like that. Maybe uh, there, there's uh, something uh, behind everything they say. But for me, uh. I'll give you, you know, what, what I'm showing you, man. That, that, that's it. And, but July 11th, I'm telling you, I'm going for the finish. I'm the best featherweight in the world, you know. That's co- not cockiness. It's just confidence. And, again, I'm just telling you how it is. And, and I'm going out there to finish him. And I'm sure he's not going to let me. It's going to be a while. But hey, I'm pumped, man. I'm excited, you know. I mean, even though, you know, we talk about disrespected and, you know, and, you know, people doubting me and all this sort of stuff. I'm not really uh, butthurt about it. I, I sort of, I'm using this as fuel. I'm just letting people know. I was like, all right, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. I'm using that. And I'm going to show you. So that that's that's all it is. You know what I mean? So I'm excited. It gets me excited. It gets me out of bed. It gets me, you know, I'm, I'm about to go to the gym now and I'm going to smash some numbers on that uh, assault bike just because we're talking about this. Just when people say, oh, he can't keep up with the pace. No one can keep up with my pace. And, uh, you know, I'm going to tell myself that today while I'm on that assault bike. And uh, that's how we get better, man. We use uh, whatever fuel we can, yeah? Inspire ourselves or motivate ourselves whatever way we can. And I'm using all that to motivate myself. Well, I know you have to go to the gym. So just a couple more questions is, yep. 
I when we talked before the UFC 245, you said once you dominate Holloway, which you ended up doing, he's going up to lightweight. He obviously taking the rematch. Do you think once you beat him again here, he's going to go up to lightweight? I th- man, look, uh, I don't think he has a has a choice. I'm surprised. Uh, I'm surprised with this fight. He's taken it straight away. You know, I thought maybe he'd want to like you know feel things out and and then uh, maybe try and get that rematch after a bit of time, but. Uh, he wants that rematch straight in. Maybe he's just like, look, I'm having one last crack at featherweight. If it doesn't happen, I'm moving up. Maybe that's what he's, he's where he's going with it. But let's be honest. I take him out again. Yeah, he ain't getting a title fight anytime soon. And uh, you know that he's going to have to bounce back. And we all know he has a big weight cut. So uh, I think uh, you know he's probably already got his eye on that lightweight division. Uh, but he just wants one last crack at this uh, featherweight division. But again, I refuse to lose. He ain't having it. Uh, no disrespect to the man. I've got all respect in the world for Max Holloway, but you know what I mean? Uh, no one's taking that belt away from me and my family and Australia. You know, all my all my uh, supporters, it's much bigger than just me, and he ain't taking that away from me. You are you and Conor McGregor are the only people to beat Aldo Mendez and Holloway. If you go out and beat Holloway for the second time, where do you think that puts you on the go, like the all-time featherweight go? Because you took out the three of the top five or three of the top four guys. Man, you're exactly right. You know what I mean? I've done, I've done what no one would have done if I take out Max back to back. You got to remember, I'm taking. I took Max out in his prime. Yeah, so uh, that that's saying something. And to take him twice back to back, that's pretty incredible. That shoots you right up there. You know, a lot of people talk about defenses. You need defenses, and I agree. You need defenses. You want to be a goat. That's why I still think Aldo's a goat. To have so many defenses, you know what I mean, and be on top of his game for so long. You know, there's man like this shit ain't easy. Fighting, you could rock up, you could turn up that some days, and some days you're just not there. You might not turn up, or you know, someone might land a lucky punch in these small gloves. You know, anything can happen. So you gotta, you gotta respect someone that can defend and stay on top for so long. So I give, uh, I give Aldo the, the goat, but I mean, you know, you do what what I what I'm planning on doing, and then I want to defend a couple of times, and then mate, you're right up there, 100. percent You know, taking out names like that in such a, a like, let's be realistic. Right now, the the level of a uh, Fighters is uh, pretty incredible, and uh, you know if I start taking, uh, well, when I start taking these guys out defending uh, my belt, you know people will be quickly uh, throwing my name out there as goat. But again, I've got nothing but respect for the guys that already got that goat status, so I ain't taking that from them yet. But I am the best featherweight in the world right now, and I plan on being the goat uh, pretty soon. But you know, again, I've got some defenses to do. And someone that's been calling you out is obviously Henry Cejudo. Now that he is retired and he's not holding up a division. Does that yeah. fight intrigue you now? It does. That intrigues me because he's no longer in the other like, other division. So that's why I'm uh, I'm I'm open to it. Before I was like, ah, you could see I was playing it off. I was like, whatever, mate. Like you know, I'm not going to let you hold up two divisions and now hold up my division. Uh, you know what I mean? So I wasn't all about it. But the fact that he he's pretty much retired. He has retired. He's no longer in the featherweight. Uh, no longer in the bantamweight division or the uh, or the flyweight division. And he's talking about featherweight. So, you know, now he's a, a featherweight fighter, as I say. As I say, he's a featherweight contender now. And uh, that's how I look at him. Uh, his opportunity probably was now, uh, right, again, because we've got some some fights happening uh, in our division. And I'm sure, uh, you know, as soon as these guys uh, fight each other and there's a number one contender, there'll be probably a couple of guys that are right up there calling for a title and everyone's going to be barking their name saying, oh, yeah, this guy, this guy. And I'm going to be like, bring it on. You know, that's what I want, man. I want. That's what all I said. I want to take out the number one contenders. If we've got clear number one contenders, bring them on. I'm chasing them. That's what I want. But uh, the reason why it was intriguing me with the Henry Cejudo match is because right now there wasn't a clear number one contender, except for Max having the rematch maybe where a lot of people think he don't deserve. So I was thinking that could be an option right now. But soon... That might not be an option because we're again we've got all the top dogs uh, in our division fighting each other. It's very exciting, so I'm I'm keen, man. I love it. I love watching the I love watching competitive fights and knowing that their potential opponents. I'm gonna have my eye on them. I'm gonna study them, and uh, you know I can't wait. It's gonna be good. It's exciting. And just last question before I let you go is obviously there's a lot of featherweight fights coming up. There's Zabit Yair is rumored. Zombie Ortega. You have Cater Ige like a mm-hmm. couple days after you. Is it just kind of be going to be who impresses the most out of that fight, or do you have a, a someone in mind that you want to defend against next? Who, whoever's whoever everyone's uh, barking, the name that they're barking, everyone's telling me 
this guy, this guy, this guy, UFC saying this guy, you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, it probably is the best, uh, most impressive performance, especially now you've got these guys fighting, you know what I mean? Everyone's fighting the the top guys, you know what I mean? So you do an impressive uh, performance, there's no way someone could take that away from you, you know, when you're putting yourself right up there. So it's going to be exciting. Uh, again, uh, whoever whoever it is, whoever wins the biggest fight, most impressively, and the, the one that's most talked about, the biggest uh, fight for me as well, you know what I mean? So the UFC will put a name in front of me and I'm going to take it, no matter who it is. All right, well, Alex, that's all I have. Thank you so much for doing this. You can go after training now. I know you kept no it too late. I'm pumped. I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, have a good one. Assault bike time. Let's do it. Have a good one. All right, see you, mate. See ya. All right, we're now joined by UFC light heavyweight Vulcan, Ozmir Vulcan. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, let's just start. You and Yuri were kind of rumored to take place in August. It's now happening in uh, July, UFC Fight Island. Was this a guy you had your eye on? I mean, uh, the UFC offered me Jiri, you know, um, before, and uh, it wasn't really uh, an interesting fight for me uh, at the moment. Um, that was maybe in the uh, end of February or something like this. I think I was still in Thailand. Um, he was unranked, you know, up and comer in the UFC. Uh, I didn't say no, but uh, you know, I was still trying to push for for bigger names. You know, I've been trying to 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 put my 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 hook on the, on Thiago Santos fights, Reyes, and um, just to name a few, and it, nothing really materialized. And then um, you know, I also have a, a pretty tough and weird situation because I'm not able to fight in the U.S. All of these uh, big name guys, you know, ranked guys, they, they, they want to fight in the U.S. They don't want to travel. Some people have this, you know, like they, they, they want the, their stuff. You know, I've been fighting all around the world, you know. Just my last two fights has been uh, uh, Uruguay and then uh, all the way to, to South Korea, you know. It's not a problem for me, but I have to do what I have to do. And I think uh, Jiri was in the same spot, you know. Nobody wanted to fight him um, for, uh, you know, for a few months. And uh, I was looking for a fight uh, at the end of the day, and Jiri was. So we, we just made it happen, you know. It, uh, it doesn't matter for me. Uh, the thing is, if you want to fight, you you, you got to fight, you know. Whoever is going to be standing next in front of me, you know, uh, will be the guy. It, it doesn't matter for me. He obviously is the former Risen champ. Has a big name. Like, is this a guy you're interested in fighting just because he was a champ in another organization? Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely, it's a, it's a, it's a big plus. It's a, it's a, something big. He has a belt around his waist, you know, and uh, that's something really, really cool, you know, because uh, you know he's a champion, you know, even though if it's not in the UFC, you know, it's it's or it's also a big league, you know. And um, and uh, that's that's something uh, that give credit that add credit to his name and uh, gives give him more value. So obviously it uh, it, it makes him a, a bigger draw. You're obviously on a two fight winning streak. Do you view your confidence as back to where it was before that title shot? Yeah, you know, for me, just making a big statement on my next fight will will bring me closer to the belt. You know. We just need to see what unfolds with, with the John Jones situation, you know, like Dominic Reyes and, and Jan or Thiago Santos, you know, willing to fight for the interim belt. You know, there is a, a lot of stuff happening. You know, we, we still don't, don't know what's going what's gonna to result out of this. But uh, definitely with a big statement win, uh, I'm going to get closer to a title shot again. What do you think is going on with John Jones? Like, do you think we see him fight again? Yeah, he will be fighting again. Of course, you know it's uh, it's in his blood. It's in him, you know. Maybe not in the light heavyweight, you know. Maybe he's finally when whenever he come back, he's gonna go to heavyweight. We never know. I think he's uh, he's looking for challenge and uh, a, a money fight. You know, he's looking for 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 the for the fight money. You know, so we need to see where the fight money is gonna be. You know, maybe uh, that's that's what he tried to do. You know, make uh, just wait till there is a new champion in. Uh, in a light heavyweight, then he's going to finally make his comeback because he's going to be uh, something big. Or maybe he's going to go to heavyweight, you know. Uh, who knows what's, what's happening in his head. 
Yuri's only ever been knocked at once. So how do you see this fight playing? Because we obviously know you have a lot of knockout power. Yeah, Jiri has been uh, knocking people out a lot, and uh, he's been knocked out uh, once. Um, we both knockout artists, you know. Uh, we both go for the kill. Um, I think uh, he probably has a higher percent rate of than ninety percent finish, you know. So, so yeah, he's 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 not gonna. This is not a fight that's that's gonna go full the the full three round, you know. Um, he stands and bang, you know. It's not like the, those last people I've been facing. You know, they like to run and they don't want to get hit. You know, so he's different in this case, and uh, that's also what's going to cause him uh, a lot of trouble. You haven't fought since December when you beat Rakic. Did you want to return sooner? But obviously, just the COVID, you couldn't. Like, were you at, were you hoping to return a lot sooner than this? Yeah, obviously. Uh, I've been uh, after the Rakic fight. I, I went back. Um, to Thailand to, to do a training camp over there, you know, I, I spent some great time, you know, get some good energy, some, you know, like, uh, it's the part of life over there, and uh, it feels good, you train good, you train hard, you, you train strong, and uh, yeah, I was ready to, to fight, but then, uh, you know, um, some fight didn't materialize, and then uh, we had the, the problem with the COVID situation, and, uh, you know, now it's, it's over, and uh, I'm looking forward for the next one. You are ranked seven. Where do you think a win over Giri puts you in the division? Uh, Giri is unranked, you know, but obviously uh, it's going to give me uh, a lot of uh, hype, you know, like uh, I'm looking for this big knockout win, you know, and uh, with the hype behind you, you know, you, you're going to get closer to a big fight. Whatever the ranking, you know, uh, you have to also look like how you beat the guy and um, how you beat him and uh, then you can get closer to a number one you know, uh, title contention guy or or something close to the top five, you know. And then, uh, as I said, you just we just need to see uh, what's happening with the with the title fight. And then uh, I'm probably going to be in the mix for this. This fight, you are a favorite once again. Are you surprised by that? Because you were an underdog against Rakic, which I was kind of surprised. It seems like betters don't, like, like, it seems like you don't get a lot of respect by the public. You say I'm not the... No, you are the favorite, but against Rakic, oh, yeah. you're the underdog. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, because uh, I was also on a one-fight winning streak against Rakic. Rakic was uh, was killing in his, in his debut. But also, Rakic never fought a, a top 10 before me, you know. And this is also the difference, you know, like, people... I've never faced anybody that was not in a top 10, and Jiri's going to be the first guy that is not in a top 10, but that's also because he wasn't in the UFC. Even though he was killing before, he was a champion in a, an other organization, but he's going to be my first guy not in a top 10, you know, and uh, those guys have been fighting unranked guy, you know, people that are good, but not that good, and uh, they've been knocking them out. You know, it's easy, you know, it's, it's, like, it's, it's like the same for me. If I go fight a um, lesser guy, then uh, obviously I'm going to have a big knockout victory. First round, really easy, one minute. Uh, it's the same for everybody, you know. Once, once you face a tougher challenge, then the fight gets harder and then uh, you, you, you really see who you are. Everyone always talks about Octagon Jitters. This is Yuri's debut. Do you think that's going to have an impact on him? Um, no, because it's going to be different. Also, uh, there is not going to be any public, um, you know, so so it's the UFC, but it's kind of a different UFC, you know what I mean? Um, I think it's not going to be uh, too much of a problem for him. Uh, he's been at the a big crowd, you know, already in, in Japan, you know, the, the crowd is pretty big over there too. But um, it's the UFC, you know, it's a, it's a, different, uh, it's a different place and... You, who knows how, how people just got challenged mentally, you know. Um, I don't have any problem with, with this, and I think uh, he won't have that. But definitely, he's going to be the tougher fight of his life. You're on the debut card of Fight Island. What's that going to be like for you? Because this has been something talked about for weeks and months now, is Fight Island. Yeah, actually, Fight Island, uh, I was looking forward to it, and uh, now I'm in it. So uh, I didn't know. I don't know where it will be, you know, if it's going to be near the U.S. or somewhere else in the world. And then you just realize it's in Abu Dhabi, you know. 
and then uh, it's pretty crazy. And I was like, fuck, I didn't realize. Uh, I never thought he's gonna be there. And then you're, you're like, okay, yeah, maybe. But yeah, it's a big card, you know, a lot of title fights, some big names, you know, it's a, it's a big pay-per-view card, and uh, I'm finally back on a big pay-per-view card. You know, my, fir- my first uh, pay-per-view card, you know, I, I was, uh, I was uh, opening the card with the, I was opening the pay-per-view with, with, with a big knockout on uh, Jimmy, you know, Manoa, and uh, that was pretty big, so, you know, I'm looking forward to the, the, the same thing next. Yeah, when you were here about Fight Island, were you one of those people picturing like in the Caribbean on a beach on tropical location? Then you find out it's in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, actually, uh, that's that's what I was thinking, you know. And then uh, obviously I was not thinking about the uh, open cage and stuff like that, but uh, just the place, you know. I was really surprised by the place, but actually it made it made total sense when 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 you look, and you know it's it's uh, it's the place, you know, when they when they do the racing and stuff like that. I've, I've, I saw this this place on TV already, you know, and uh, now I will be able able to per- perform over there. Now it's going to be great, you know. It's it's a big place and uh, it's really exciting. It is obviously hot over there. Do you think the heat's going to be a factor? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be really, really hot. Plus, it's going to be uh, July, you know, full summer. Um, it's okay, you know, we'll be, there is a AC everywhere over there, you know. Just don't stay outside for too long. Otherwise, you know, if you have problem cutting weight, I think you, just, you can just go on the, the rooftop and you're, you'll be fine, you know, in, uh, in less than 10 minutes. No, but... Um, Apart from that, you know, you'll be in a, in, in a place full of AC, you know, it's not going to be a problem for the fight. It is obviously going to take place at nighttime there, or, or in the morning, just to keep the pay-per-view times the same. Like, are, are you going to just stay on regular, like, time zone, just so you don't get confused and you're fighting not at 6 a.m. their time? Yeah, you know, you're going to... You're gonna slowly adapt, you know, um, to closer to the to the fight time, and uh, just to just to be sharp, you know, you you need to be awake, you know, like you need to have your reflex there uh, ready, you know, and for for this exact moment. So obviously, you need to adapt and and make sure you're gonna be in the in the best shape of your life. Now that Fight Island is a thing, and they're getting these international fighters. Are you looking to turn around quickly after this fight if it all goes well? Yeah, obviously, you know, uh, Fight Island is um, not that far from me. You know, it's, 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 it's like, I think, a five-hour flight. Um, uh, not too much of a time difference. So it's pretty pretty cool, you know. Uh, if a lot of fights going to be there, you know, I want to be part of uh, as many as I can. This fight, too, like... Yuri is not an like he's not a known guy to North American fans. Like, are you gonna try to like is that add motivation for you? Is he's he really has nothing to lose just because this is a UFC debut? If he loses, not many people in the North America know who he is. I mean, there is a lot of lot of uh, things to gain for him. You know, uh, a lot of things to lose for me. But you know, I don't I don't really care about that. You know, um, a fight is a fight. You know, whoever you're facing, uh, you you. You you got to come out uh, victorious, you know. And uh, this is what I, I plan on doing. You know, I, I don't really care about what's happening for uh, in case of a loss because I don't look forward to a loss. You know, I'm going there to win the fight and do it in a devastating fashion. And you're a guy that's fought for the belt before. How far away do you think you are from another title fight? Um, I think two more fights. You know, uh, we need to see what's happening with the the title shot. You know, who's going to be fighting for the belt? A big statement wins against Jiri will bring me closer to a title shot for myself, and I, I guess two more fights, and I will be fighting for the belt also. Is there anyone in the division you want to fight? Yeah, there is uh, Thiago Santos. Uh, I've been wanting to fight him, obviously. Dominic Reyes, you know, I need my rematch against this guy. And, um, you know, probably those, probably those guys are going to be the two fighting for, for, for the belt, so... You know, hopefully one of them will be victorious and then I can have the fight I want. Does that race fight still bug you? Because that's a fight a lot of people thought you won. Yeah, it doesn't really bother me because it's also my, my fault, you know. Uh, it was my fault I didn't do enough, you know, to, 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 to claim the victory uh, the, way, uh, the way I deserve. But uh, it's a, it's a, it was a learning experience, you know. You got to do more because uh, then uh, you don't need to cry about it after. But uh, obviously it was uh, really upsetting. 
But uh, you know, then uh, then uh, now I, I know what I have to do, and I'm gonna enter the fight with uh, more will to win. You know, with like gyms obviously shutting down around the world, what was Switzerland like? Like, was your gym open? No, the gym was closed officially, but I just uh, rented the small plates and um, I bring some mats, you know, some weights and and um, and two guys. So I was training with two two of my sparring partners. Uh, we Switzerland was not really on lockdown. It was like uh, five people max that that can hang around together um, in a place. So it was like maximum five people, and um, but obviously no contact. You know, for in the very beginning, then the contact starts um, be, becoming a, a, a lot, was allowed, and uh, now everything is back to normal. You know, the gym opened uh, maybe three weeks ago and um, and uh, we didn't really add too much we had uh, maybe a few weeks without any new case that was really good and now we have a few new cases coming coming back but we'll see you know um, it's under control was it difficult just to prepare for this fight just everything going on no it's the same for me i was able to focus a lot on my conditioning um, I lift a lot. I became really strong because uh, that was mostly the thing I was able to do uh, without problem. And then, uh, and then that's it. You know, you just have to 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 work with with what you have and make the best out of it. All right. Well, Vulcan, that's all I have for you. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Thanks, cool. Yeah, no problem. It. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. All right. Well, we're now joined by Frankie Edgar. Frankie, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. No, my pleasure, bro. Um, let's just start off. You're you're supposed to fight at Bantamweight in January against Sandhagen. You ended up taking that short notice fight against Zombie. Do you have any regrets about that? Looking back on that fight, or would you still do that if you still had the option? Yeah, I'm, I I can't go back and change things that uh, that, that happened already. So I have no regrets. You know, they're part of my life, part of my career, and uh, you know, would I do things differently in the going ahead? Yes, but I wouldn't change anything in the past. No. And. Were you hoping they would rebook that Sandhagen fight, or was it just kind of, it didn't really matter to you who you're making your debut against at Bantamweight? Yeah, it didn't really matter. Um, yeah, I, I just want to get in, get in there, get get a get a W. Uh, it didn't matter if it was Sandhagen or not. So uh, you know, I know we were supposed to go in, uh, in January before I got the the, the zombie fight, but uh, you know, the way things worked, just the way it went. So you're fighting UFC 251 July 11th. Were you hoping to return a bit sooner after that zombie loss, or is this kind of the right time frame? It's about the, about the right time. Um, I wanted to fight, I guess, May, June, you know, so July is, is not so bad. Obviously, uh, nothing is ideal in, in today's, uh, you know, to, but what's going on with it, in today. So, you know, I guess uh, everybody has to make a little bit of adjustments. And Fight Island, it's obviously Abu Dhabi. Were you kind of hoping it was going to be somewhere else? That everyone kept on talking about Fight Island, like on a beach. Like, were you hoping it was going to be like that lo tropical location everyone was kind of thinking about? I did, I did, I did. Honestly, I thought uh, I thought it was going to be in the Caribbean, or I heard even the U.S. Virgin Islands. I was like, yeah, I could get down with that, but uh, I, you know, it, it's okay, man. Um, like I said, we're all making adjustments, and it's going to be pretty historic being over there fighting a no crowd on, on uh, you know. A, a makeshift arena that they just made for this fight. It's, it's going to be cool. Yeah. What do you think that's going to be like? Cause you've been in these massive events, headlining pay-per-views to now go in front of no fans. Like how much, like, what do you think that's going to be like for you? I, I don't think it's going to be that different. You know, uh, I grew up wrestling, uh, you know, in, in small college and in high school on Saturday morning matches, no one's in the crowd. You, you hear your shoes squeaking on the mat. So I'm definitely accustomed to, you know, training in, in empty, or, or, or competing in empty gyms um you know even in the gym or you know when we're sparring our guys or you go to a boxing gym everyone's screaming against you but there's really no fans there and you obviously train with mark henry but how different has it been with just all these quarantine rules you can't have that many people and like how different has your training been in the lead up to this fight it was early but it's pretty much getting back to normal um you know we, we pros got to go ahead in our state to, to you know meet and, and train and prepare uh, some places are definitely limited. I, I luckily I own a wrestling school in my hometown. And I've been able to utilize that space, you know, throughout this whole time. And someone else that just went to Mark Henry was Cody Garbrandt. He obviously picked up that mass one over his son. So how big or how much did you get to train with him? Yeah, I was training with him the whole time he was out here. Uh, you know, before he got he got a little sickness when he was out here. I had to go back. That was kind of right around the time uh, the uh, you know the, the virus hit, I guess. And um, 
you know, but while he was here for those couple mo- a couple months, maybe a month and a half, we were training, you know, frequently every day. And Pedro Munoz, was this a guy you kind of had your eye on, or is that, again, is this just kind of who the UFC offered you for your bandweight debut? Yeah, I mean, he's been saying my name for a little bit. He wanted to fight me uh, along with a couple other people, so I figured he could be one of the guys. He was definitely uh, – I knew he was a, a potential opponent. He is ranked seventh in the division, so, like, where do you think a, a win over Pedro puts you in this division? I guess right about there, you know. I mean, I don't think – rankings kind of don't make sense these days. Um but, I mean, you know, if we're doing it logically, I guess they'll put me at six or seven if I beat the number seven guy. You're, you're a former lightweight champion, but do you think bandweight is kind of where you should have been your whole career? Because you have been a – you were a smaller lightweight. Yeah, smaller lightweight, smaller featherweight. I, you know, I don't know. This weight, I've been dieting the right way, correctly. I feel, I feel fantastic, you know. Um, I'm actually putting good food in my body consistently since the start of camp. And I feel the difference. I'm losing weight, but I still feel as strong as I always do. Uh, so, you know, I really wouldn't be able to answer that question until I, until I compete and see how it goes. Um, but as far as, like, sty- uh, size-wise, yeah, I think I've probably been a band away my whole career. Is the cut to 35 a worry for you, or is it kind of right on schedule? I mean, I'm right where I need to be, but it is a little bit of a worry. I mean, I haven't been down to 135 in 20 years, literally, since I've been 18 years old in my senior year in high school. So, uh um, but back then I did it a lot different than I'm doing it now. So I, I definitely know I'm going to make the weight, uh, uh, but we'll see how, how much of a struggle it gets towards the end. And you obviously are on this massive card. Like, what's it like for you? You've been on a bunch of big cards. This one, three title fights for debut on Fight Island. Like, this kind of as big it's going to get for a while. Like, what's it like to be on this card? Yeah, it's great, man. I, you know, I got to fight on UFC 200, the first card, card in the garden. So I've been on some pretty big cards, some pretty big names. And, uh, this is perfect. It's suiting for me. I feel like, uh, you know, I want to get out there and, and, and in front of a big audience, and this is the fight. This is the fight card to do it. Your wrestling is obviously a big factor in a lot of your fights. How important do you think it's going to be in this fight against Pedro? Pedro has very good takedown defense, so we'll see. You know, um, takedowns are a lot harder to come by these days, um, so I'm prepared to have to stand up with him if we do. But, you know, of course, I'm going to look for the shot if it's there. Do you think you'll have the size advantage just because you have been a 45? Or do you think you're going to be around the same size? I think we'll be about the same size. I won't be surprised if he cuts a little bit more than I do as well. But uh, I may have the height and reach maybe for the first time in my life. <laughs> yeah, what's that going to be like? Because it seems every fight, especially that Holloway one, he had a big height advantage. Like, How f- better will that be for you where you don't have to try to just close the distance the entire fight where you could fight at distance because you'll, be uh, you'll have the longer reach? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. It's, it's definitely going to be something new. I mean, I've fought guys in the gym, of course, that, are, that I'm taller than and whatnot. But uh, – yeah, I mean, it, I think it will make things easier, but, you know, little guys are a little bit quicker, a little bit more athletic too sometimes. So there's always a little give and take. How do you see this fight playing out between you and Pedro? Yeah, I mean, I think he's, he comes forward. He brings a lot of pressure. You know, I don't really back up either. So I think it's going to be an action-packed fight. Uh, you know, I don't know how exactly. I, you know, I'm not one to predict it and, and you know, call the round and like that but uh you know as long as i show up i feel good and fight like i have been in the gym and, and to my potential i feel like i'm gonna get this win he fought cody too did you pick garbrandt's brain about kind of his tendencies and what he did in there yeah we talked a little bit about it uh you know mark mark talked to cody about it and he's gonna convey it to me that, that, that's the best way to do it mark's the mastermind behind all of us and uh you know he'll pick out all the details yeah mark to me is one of the best coaches in mma you see dc saying he's been working with them like He's kind of one of those guys that doesn't get mentioned as one of the best coaches. Like, how important has he been just throughout your career, having him as your coach? Yeah, Mark, you know, me and Mark started together pretty much. When I started, uh, Mark started coaching. So, uh, you know, we got to kind of come up together, and it's uh, it's fun. And, 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 you know, it's, it's good that everybody's finally acknowledging, you know, Mark Henry because I've known it forever. Uh, and he's only getting better. He's still kind of a green coach if you think about it. You know, he's been – doing this oh well, i guess the length of my career 15 years but uh you know, as far as coaching goes that's still kind of green so I, he's getting better and better as it goes you're on the two fight losing streak how important is this fight for you to win just to snap that losing streak could start off your band and weight career with a win yeah, it's important you know i mean you're only as good as your last fight and that's cliche and all and uh i want i want to feel a win i want to feel a victory it's uh it's been a long time to, to go home with a win and uh that hurts, man. Losing, losing sucks, and you have to dwell on it for quite a time. And the only way to get over it is, is, is a win. And, you know, it's been two fights since that. You fought in Abu Dhabi, too. Like, how big do you think that would be where you know kind of the travel? Because it's a long flight from the States. Like, how important do you think that's going to be for you? I mean, it, experience only only gives you an advantage. Uh, you know, going to, I was in Korea last fight. I was in 
Canada the fight before. So my, this is my third fight overseas in Canada, I guess you call it overseas, but, uh, you know, my third fight in a different country. And, uh, you know, the, the more you do it, the more reps you get it, the more comfortable you get at it. Are you worried about the heat out there and just tiring you out? Nah, I, I know. <laughs> I grew up in wrestling rooms where, uh, heat is, uh, you know, kind of where we live. And three round fight. You haven't had a three round fight in quite some time. The hollow is five rounds. Zombie was scheduled for five. Like, how much better do you think that's going to be where you can really push a hard pace for three hard rounds? Yeah, no, it's great. Uh, it, it makes even even the camp a little bit better. You don't have to put as much as much miles on your body as far as sparring rounds go. Um, and, yeah, you know, I could, I could start out the gate, you know, guns blazing and kind of try to have the foot in the gas for all three rounds. And your opponent you're supposed to fight was Sandhagen. We saw Sterling get him out of there quickly. Do you take anything away from that? Like, man, that could have been you, or do you not really pay any attention to that? No, nah, nah, you know, Sterling's a different fighter than I am, and you, know, you never know how fights are going to go. So, uh, you know, hats off Sterling. That was a, a capital. He really jumped on an opportunistic time and, and you know, looked, looked phenomenal. And it came out recently that in Abu Dhabi, for the pay-per-view, it's going to be on normal North American time. So the main card's going to be 10 p.m. That's like 5 or 6 a.m. in Abu Dhabi. Are you just going to try to stay on North American time zone then? I, I don't know, actually. I've been thinking about that. Uh, I was planning on going 10 days early to get acclimated. So now that kind of throws a little monkey wrench and everything. But if I do go out there 10 days early, I'll just pretty much like, yeah, like you're saying, stay on our time, stay up real late, sleep mostly during the day. Um, I, I just don't know how things are going to be as far as, um, you know, what's allowed and, you know, restrictions as far as with the virus. So who knows, uh, you know, during the day or during at night, if what we're allowed and what not to do. So I think a lot of it, got to get a lot more information before I make up my mind on how we're going to handle that. Uh, besides Cody, who have been the main guys you've been working with for this camp? Uh, well, Cody's coming back out to more. Valiev from Russia is coming out soon. And uh, I've been training some local kids that, 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 that we have on our team, some young kids. And uh, my training partner, Chris Lagore, who's been with me since day one as well. And then who's going to be making the trip to Abu Dhabi? I assume Mark Henry, and then who else is going to go? Yeah, Mark, Chris Ligori, and uh, and Ricardo Almeida will be in my corner for this. Munoz, he hasn't fought in a while. He hasn't fought since June of last year. How do you think that layoff is going to affect him? Because that's a 13-month layoff. But you've been a guy that's had a long layoff too, so how do you think that's going to impact him? Everybody's different. You know, as far as I, I for myself, impact lay, long layoffs never really impacted me. I always felt like I – I mean, I, I mean, it depends, you know, I've always stayed in the gym and stayed active. So I, I kind of never missed timing and whatnot. Um, but again, you know, everyone ha handles it differently. And the former Banway champ was Henry Cejudo. He kind of shockingly retired. Do you think he's going to stay retired? Or do you think we'll see him fight again? Um, I mean, I, I think he'll fight again, you know, uh, it may, may, maybe in a while, but I, I think we'll, he'll come back. And it seems like he likes to be in the news a little bit. The Bantamweight division obviously doesn't have a champion. You have the vacant title fight on your card, but there's a lot of big names come back. We have Aldo dropped down. You're dropping down. Cruz came back. Like, you are a big name. Like, do you think a win here kind of puts you in a driver's seat for a title contention fight? I mean, I don't know. There's so many contenders right now. You know, so many guys chomping at the bit. But, you know, win only puts you in the right, you know, right direction. And, uh, and the fact that I have a name and I, I fought, you know, I've been in this for a while and fought for the title a bunch of times, was a champion, former champion, it, it only helped. You fought Aldo twice, but you lost both. Is it kind of something that you hope is maybe he wins the belt and you can have that trilogy for the Bantamweight title? Yeah, I definitely uh, would love a chance at redemption. Um, that first fight we had was very close. Uh, you know, some people say I won, whatever, but he won on the scorecards. The second fight, he... He definitely uh, got me, you know, I, I feel like I didn't have the, I didn't show up, you know, I didn't have the best, uh, the best performance. So yeah, I would love another crack at it, but you know, a lot of things got to line up to make that happen. Is there anyone at Bantamweight in particular you want to fight like a Cruz, like a Dillashaw, just like some of those big names, or is it just kind of whoever gets you close to that title shot? Yeah. You know, I think, I think my goal still needs to be go for the title. You know, if I'm not trying to fight to, to be the best, then, uh, then I shouldn't be fighting. What do you think it would do for your legacy to win that bandweight title, become a two weight champion and two uh, weight classes uh, 20 pounds apart from each other as well? Yeah, I mean, that would, you know, that would be amazing, right? And uh, I just got to put one foot in front of my, uh, the other at first and, uh, and go get this done on, uh, on July 11th. Uh, now, I still have goals to, that I want to accomplish, but um, you got to take them, you know, step by step. So, step one is, is Pedro Munoz. Do you like how this is just three rounds? Or were you were you hoping your bandwagon debut would be a main event on like a fight night, have five rounds to really showcase 
your skills at 135? No, I, I think a three rounds perfect for me. You know, since this is the first time going down to 35, I really don't know how my body's going to react and how I'm going to feel. So, uh, yeah, I'm okay with a three round fight. And being on a big card like this, too, is, is only uh, uh, good, at, you know, just to be in front of more eyes. And just last thing, this is what we've mentioned this is a massive card. No fans. Do you know if it's going to be the smaller octagon in there? I do not, actually. I do not. So when you find out, you let me know. <laughs> yeah. If it is the smaller octagon, like, how do you think that's going to impact the fight? Uh, it, everyone, everyone says there's more finishes in the small octagon, more action in the small octagon. So I guess, you know, maybe a little more action packed. I fought in both. Uh, you know, I think I, I fought in the Palms quite a few times, uh, Cosmopolitan, and, and those are always the smaller, the smaller cage. Well, just last thing for you on that, Frankie, is Bantamweight division is one of the most stacked divisions in the entire UFC. Like, how eager are you just to be a part of this and really start fighting these contenders and just new fresh faces? Because you fought a lot of the guys at lightweight and featherweight, and these are all fresh matchups for you. Yeah, it's just exciting. Uh, you know, it's, it's good to have, you know, some fresh blood and at my stage in my career, you know. Um, not a lot of people get to, to, to fight across three different weight classes. So, uh, you know, I want to definitely uh, make my print in, in the bandweight division. All right, well, Frankie, that's all I have. Thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Cole, you got it, brother. Yeah, Take have care. a good one.